Good morning, and welcome to a special edition of the 330 Sports Show. My name is Justin Coffin, and today is Friday, May 14th, 2021. We're broadcasting live from downtown Youngstown, Ohio, and we are produced by Joe Danier and the Youngstown Studio Network. Uh, we have a special edition of our show today. Uh, normally, we're Tuesday, Thursday, but we're doing a, a special Friday morning show. Uh, and joining me live in studio, she flew out from L.A. <laughs> last night, uh, is USA gold medalist swimmer uh, Melanie Valerio. And it's Melanie Valerio Thomas, Thomas now. Yeah. So, um, But we're going to go with Melanie Valerio yeah. just because when I'm, I'm going to probably mix I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm Valerio all the good. way. Yep. And, and Melanie was nice enough. She brought in uh, one of her swim caps from uh, from the. Uh -huh. This is from yeah, the Olympics. It was from the Olympics. Well, yeah. I'm saying it is. I'm 25 it year is. old swim cap. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having you sign. Don't up wear it. You leave. <laughs> and then this is like the coolest thing. This like literally made my day. So this is Melanie's gold medal from the uh, Atlanta yep. Olympics 96. in 1996. So so. I mean, just so freaking cool. Mm -hmm. You I can mean, have that too. <laughs> I'm just <Yeah>. kidding. <laughs> that one, that one, you're probably not giving up. Um, so I have a ton to ask That's you. Fine. A Let's ton do to talk it. about. I Let's know there's it. so many people um, that have questions for you. I have them written down. Right. And, um, but first, um, you know, since this is like a Youngstown-based show, tell everyone out there that might not, you know, be familiar with you know, like your early days and growing up and yeah, stuff, like yeah. your Youngstown roots. Sure. So uh, grew up in Camel. Uh, my parents went to, you know, Camel Memorial. My sister went to Camel Memorial. I did not. We'll probably get to that later. But um, Camel, Ohio, born and raised. Um, <clears throat> I have an, I had an older sister who started swimming um, because a friend of hers at school was going down to the Y to swim. And she kind of begged my mom and dad to go with her. So that's kind of how the Valerios got going in swimming. Okay. Um, and so that would have, I would have been about five years old at the time. And okay. so Linda was going to the Y, going to the Y. And my dad was like, let's go. You're going to. I was all over the place, you know, hyper as can be. <laughs> and uh, so we started at the YWCA just mm -hmm. around the corner. Yep. And uh, we'd go to practice after school. And, you know, my sister, like I said, was older. So she was, you know, really doing a, a swim workout. And I was always in the end lane. I'm five years old. I, my goggles are like this. <laughs> you know, I don't have a cap. And I'm just, you know, just going back and forth. So that's really how it started. Okay. And um, I actually started racing. They, back then they had six and under. And so we would go, we would have meets at the Y, and I spent a lot of time down there. Um, and so that's really how we all got started in swimming, you know, that's for so my family. Cool. Yeah. That's so cool. And then it just kind of went from there. You know, we both kept swimming, um, s s swam all, you know, I haven't stopped swimming since I was five. That's amazing. Yeah. And I, I had told you off air about the story. Um, I had just got a message earlier right. this week. Right. And, um, uh, and forgive me, the name, um, Flatley yes, is, her, yes, is her married yes. name now. She had said, like, you know, the Vindicator did a yep. story on your sister. Yeah, they did. Yep. Who went on to Alabama to swim. Yep, she did. And then she said, you know, well, we hear you have a younger sister in swimming. Yeah. And is, is she going to be as good as you? And this is after she had won two state championships. Yes. And she's like, no, she's better. Yeah. So, yeah. what it an was, awesome. It was, yeah, it was a good thing. And, and Linda kind of led the way. So, you know, to get to Alabama and my parents figured out, you know, when she got recruited. And, you know, it's a lot when you have when you have a child who, you know, is fairly successful at a sport. And and when it comes to, you know, it was a way for me and Linda to, to, to go to school, yeah. to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. You know, we weren't going to go to college if there wasn't scholarship money. And for anyone out there listening, you know, swimming is a great sport. More for girls nowadays because of Title IX, but um, which I'm not really a fan of. But if if you get involved in swimming, you have a really good chance of getting a, at least a little bit of money to mm -hmm. go to school. And and that's really, you know, it wasn't from the beginning. Not when I was six, where my parents were like, okay, got to get a scholarship. But you know, as as we got older and older, it was like, you know what, this is going to be your way out to go and like see the world, and it worked. And you guys had a pool at your house as we well? We did. We had it. We had an in-ground pool at our house. But, you know, we went to practice every day. And the, and obviously the pool's open from, like, Memorial Day to Labor Day. And, sure. and, we, and there were summers where it was like I would go to practice in the morning, come home, we'd play all day in the pool. I mean, it, I've been in – it's just nonstop in yeah. the water. So 
And now that I'm older, it's almost like I need to be in the pool. And if I'm not, it's like I take longer showers. Like I need to be in water. Yeah. You know, it, it's kind of weird, but it, it's a part of you. It's a part of yeah. me, yes. Because, like I said, since I was five, that's so so, so yeah. cool, so neat. Um, so uh, just a few more things about yeah. like, what do you remember about Youngstown growing up? Like besides uh, obviously swimming, but what else? Yeah, um, just a real sense of family. So. M- like 90% of my cousins, all my aunts and uncles, you know, are from Camel. A few moved away, but um, it was always Christmas dinner um, in the basement of my cousin's house, right? Okay. All the Valerios would get together. So Christmas was a big deal. And, you know, like like I said, you know, we went away to school and stuff like that. So we always came back for Christmas. And it's one of the things that I don't think you realize until you leave the area that I was very fortunate to grow up here. My mom and dad have a real... Um, strong worth at work ethic. Yes. Um, so I'm very fortunate when you hear, even when you hear pro athletes um, who come from the Midwest area, you know, it's very apparent that you you learn, you know, you learn a lot about hard work and keeping your head down and, and just, you know, going for whatever your goal is mm-hmm. or whatever you're trying to achieve. That's so so awesome. that's kind of, that's really what I'm so proud. Like, I'm very proud to be from Youngstown, Ohio. That's, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and Joe and Joe and I always talk about it. it's it's the work ethic I yeah. think that separates Youngstown from a lot of different places. It really is. You know, I've swam all over the world, and I remember one time I was in a meet at a meet in Australia, and there was a woman who was from Youngstown, Ohio. Like you would be surprised the people who know Youngstown. I mean, it's it's really you know, and, and I start off saying that I'm from Cleveland, and they'll go, "Oh, I'm from whatever," and then I zoom in. I'm like, "Well, I'm really from Youngstown." Okay. So yeah, it's very much you know, people know Youngstown. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Um, before I get into more of my questions, yeah. I don't want to step on any of the toes of, we had um, Carlo Corden and Chelsea and Chad D'Angelo from Boardman, swim coaches, uh, put together some questions for us from their swimmers. Let's go, yeah. So I want to <clears> ask <throat> their questions, and then, so mine don't overlap okay. into theirs. So that sounds cool. um, the first question we have here is from Ella Houston. She, um, she said her dad knew you back in like the early days of swimming back in the 80s and talk (laughs) highly, highly about you. So she's uh, currently a junior at Boardman, uh, swims for the (laughs) Neptunes and the Boardman Swim Club. But her question for you is, while you were swimming at the Hawkins School, Mm -hmm. how many hours of training did you um, do per day or per week? And a second part, what kind of dry land or lifting were you doing back at the time? You know, that's a great question. So um, I didn't start lifting or really doing dry line. Okay, besides like my dad trying to teach me how to do dumbbells in the basement, right? Right? Like my dad was a total like sports freak. And I was lucky because he knew what I needed, right? Like, you know, and not one of those overbearing kind of parents, but that's a great question. So when I got to high school was really when I started doing Two a day practices, mm-hmm. and I believe that we would do. Um, I'd we'd swim in the morning. I would go to school. We'd swim after practice. Dry land was very minimal in high school. It was after afternoon practice, and it was like a half hour of just sit ups. And I really, it wasn't anything you know like it is now. So in high school, um, and and lifting weights was. Mm, I got to say, I probably didn't really lift until I got to college. Like okay. really lift. You sure, know what I mean? Like sure. I had a weight program. <laughs> I mean, there was like a, a dumbbell, like a big barbell and a few dumbbells, but it was nothing organized in high school. So, okay. but depending on what your body type is, remember I was really tall and not only was I tall in high school, but I kept growing. So I didn't stop growing until I was like a junior in college, okay. maybe even a senior. Wow. So I was nev- never able to gain the strength that I needed. That's why my career was so late sure. because I, I didn't get the strength that I needed. So if I were you, I would def- if I were her, I would definitely start doing dry land in now in, in high school. And then when you get to college, you'll get a more like precise program okay. and things like that, but definitely start lifting weights and, you know, and doing that kind of stuff. Okay. And then did she have another? Um, and that, that, yeah, I think, and how many days per week? Or so hours yeah, week? we, we, we swam doubles every day, like I said, before and after practice. Um, and then we'd have a big practice on Saturday and remember, so I swam the hundred free, I swam the 50, the hundred, the 200. So really sprint oriented sure. and the 500, but I trained like a distance person because back then that's just how it was. You know, it was, they call it old school training I don't train like that now but um so I was really I could I could I could do any freestyle event from okay. the 50 to the 
1500 or the 1650, but my I was really a sprinter. Okay. So right. it depends, you know, it depends on your event and stuff like that. But definitely, I think the, the more flexible you are, if you want to start doing yoga and things like that, mm -hmm. you know, you can't go wrong. Right. And yeah, I'm not telling you exactly. to work out 24 seven, right, right? right? Like within like normal, you know, but definitely get into it. Yeah. I say okay. weights are number one. Awesome. Very yeah. good. All right. Next question is from Alexis Mihawk. Okay. Uh, she is a swimmer at Boardman as well. Okay. Uh, she swims for the Youngstown Neptunes and Boardman Tennis uh, and Swim Club. Okay. She's a sophomore. And she says, what helped push you through all of those like tough times maybe when you, if you wanted to give up at some point? Mm -hmm. Like what helped push you through? Yeah. It, high school wasn't so bad for me, like I said, because I went, I went to Hawken and Hawken was, I, I, it was the first time where I went to school with people who swam, mm -hmm. right? So I went to class with people who swam. We went to practice together and things like that. So the hard times for me were in like sixth, seventh and eighth grade. Cause you know, those are the years where you start doing stuff, right? Like, okay, this is going <laughs> right. to sound awful, but like that's when we would go roller skating, okay, on Saturdays, <laughs> right? And you and and kids are doing things after practice and it's not like there were that many sports for girls back then. I think we had basketball and I played softball in the summer, but things start to pull you away from what you want. And it was really hard. Like everybody wanted to go to the library after school, right? <laughs> and and and, and I had to go to practice, right? Yeah. And I hated that. There were times where I hated it, and I really hated it. Um, but that whole work ethic, there was no question. There was, and there was no question that we weren't going to go to practice. That's great. Yeah. I don't know how else to put it, and maybe that's not right. Maybe it was wrong, but um, I got that, and I don't e care. Exactly. So, um, th you know, that's how you get through it. You, and, to be honest, though, now... I would, you know, for for girls now, set a goal. If that's to if that's to be a state champion or to make finals or to do a certain time or to go to school or to get a scholarship, make sure you know your goals. Work backwards, and mm. and and if you know, work backwards from your goal to see where you need to be, like steps to get up to that goal, and then focus on that on an in you know on a daily in and out basis because that's what really gets you through it that's a great that's great yeah. advice working backwards especially set yeah. your goal because you then... can't get way up there you got to know so it like for example if you're trying to break a minute let's say in the 100 fly you got to know where you have to be now if you're if you're at like a, a 125 mm -hmm. you got a long way to go sure. right and that might not be a, an accurate goal for you so definitely set a goal shoot high aim high right, yeah, right. and then kind of work backwards from there absolutely yeah. awesome advice um, next question is from Madison Kelso. She's a junior at Boardman. Look at all these girls, I, yeah. I, yeah, we have most, most of them are girls. There are a few boys' questions on right. there. Um, so she wants to know, uh, she's a junior as well. Uh -huh. um, so the experience of winning an Olympic gold medal, uh -huh. and did that experience change you in any way? Um, it definitely changed me. I mean, how, how can it not, okay? Yeah. But I will be very honest and say that um, when I qualified to make the team, it was in Indianapolis. There's a meet going on there right now. So when I qualified and made the team, for me, that was my goal. Okay, so here's a really good example of setting goals. My goal was to make the Olympic team. Mm -hmm. And looking back, my goal should have been to win an Olympic gold medal. Okay, so it should have been, I want to win an Olympic gold medal. The sub goal should have been obviously to make the Olympic team, right? And then down from there, like we were talking about, like step by step. So for me, because my goal was to make the Olympics, having my parents there and, and qualifying for the team, I got fourth in the hundred, um, was the ultimate, that was like the ultimate day. And then obviously going to the Olympics, my parents were there as well. My sister was there. Everybody was there. But for me, it was making it. And what I remember most are the years, like the three years before leading up to it and all the things, all the steps that I had accomplished to get there. You know, I had to qualify for other national teams. And, you know, you don't just like make it to the well, I guess the NBA is not a good example because you can just go from high school to the NBA. But, um, you you know, there are certain steps that I had to take. So I remember all of that. Um, the Olympics were just like, like, it was like, yeah. boom, here we go. And, you know, if you're not ready, remember, I went to trials four, year, four times. So I went in 88, 92, got last in 88 made consoles in 92, made it in 96, and then just missed it in 2000. So the first time I went, it was like, 
oh my God, there's, you know, there's so-and-so and there's mm -hmm. so-and-so and you're so over. And I'm just, you know, I'm from Youngstown, Ohio. And what am I doing here? And I just, you know, mm. <laughs> and then the next time you learn, like, you got to be ready for it. Like, it's going to be, the show is going to start. Like, they're going to open up the curtains and mm -hmm. it's go time. And then in 96, I was completely ready. None of that bothered me. I was, you know, it's like, okay, third time, let's do this. I got to focus on my event, and that's how so I So you're did a little it. starstruck the first time little, you did it? Oh, totally. I got <laughs> last in the 100. Only the girls who fall started were behind me. Honest, honest. That's that's how bad it was. But I didn't I didn't know what was, you know, I didn't know what was going on. Right, you know? right. So, but um, what was her question? Oh, did it change did me? Did it change you in any way? And you said, of course, but Of course, it has but to. Um, look, I'm still just... I told you before this, like, I'm just a girl from Camel, Ohio. Mm -hmm. I really am. That hasn't changed. Um, I get, uh, you know, I'm tall and, and I get a lot of questions like, are you an athlete and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I've kind of, I think I've kind of grown into it. And now that I'm even older, I still get those questions and I just laugh when people ask me because I'm like, oh, you think I still got it? Like, do I look <laughs> like I still got it? Because, you know, I'm in my 50s now, so I don't know. So, yeah, it does change you. But I think you need to be, again, because I grew up here, you know, my parents were very humble, and, and I kept that, I kept those qualities with me. So I don't go around, you know, yeah, right, bragging or, or trying to do stuff. I'm very happy to do stuff like this, um, but it's not like I, you know, wear my, wear my medal and, you know, yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, I probably should, be, I'm, I'm putting that thing on before she leaves. You can put it on right now. Why, you can I'll, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do All it right. off. We'll camera. do a little ceremony, like, you know, like we'll pretend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. We have a, yeah, a couple fine. boys questions here. Okay, let's um, go with the boys. This is from Andrew Yoakum. Uh, he is a swimmer. Again, all these are Boardman High right. School swimmers. Right. Applewood Swim Club okay. and Youngstown Neptunes. He is a sophomore, and he wants to know if at any time in your career for both swimming and triathlons, oh. if you felt like taking a step back and maybe doing other sports. Okay, so that's a great question. And when I... Um, so in 2000, I just missed the team, but I was in grad school. I went back to UVA to get my master's in exercise physiology. So there, it was, it was kind of, <clears throat> it was a good learning lesson because I walked away from trials. They were in Indy again. Okay. And of course, there's a lot of happiness and joy, but there's a lot of heartbreak when you go to a meet like that. And I didn't make the team, but I walked away with my master's degree and I went on to get a job and, you know. So I had a backup plan, which was great. Um, the reason I started doing triathlons was because I wasn't, it wasn't like I didn't know that I was an athlete, because obviously I was. I was I was a swimmer, and swimmers are not necessarily athletes, right? Most swimmers can't really run. I highly doubt many swimmers can play basketball or baseball. It's just okay. It's just a different kind of sport. And so I was living in Arizona, and... Um, I was riding my bike, just a bike, just like a, you know, whatever, a, no, no fancy bike to practice. I would swim and I would ride my bike home. And this guy, there were all these triathletes, and this guy's like, you know, you train so hard for nothing. Like, you train really hard and you don't do anything. And I'm like, well, I'm, you know, I, I'm done. Like, I did everything. And, and it got me thinking, and I was like, you know what, I should try doing these triathlons to see if I really am an athlete, like a true athlete. So I was lucky enough to get sponsored by Timex because I, I – they were taking applications for amateur triathletes. And so okay. I was like, okay, I'm going to apply. And my bit was that I would be the first girl out of the water with my Timex wetsuit and you get <laughs> all the, you know, you get all the press and everything like that. Yeah. So they agreed to it. They gave me a bike. I had to learn how to, how to cycle. And if there's anyone out there trying to do triathlons, the biggest advice I can give you is if you need to learn how to swim, go join a swim team. If you need to learn how to cycle, go join a cycling group. And if you need to know how to run, go join a running club. Don't try to do it as a triathlete because runners know how to run, cyclists know how to cycle, and swimmers know how to swim. And I was trying to do it pretty seriously. So yeah. that's what I did, and that's why I did it, to see – that's why I did triathlon. So that's a great question because it proved – I qualified for Boston in a marathon, so that I was like, okay, I can run – I wasn't a big fan of cycling. And the reason that I stopped doing triathlons um, was because everyone I knew got hit by a car. Oh. Everyone I knew wow. had either got sideswiped or hit by a car. And I was like, you know what? I've been doing this for like four years, and I think my ticket's almost <laughs> up, and uh, I'm out. So I, 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 I stopped doing it. Okay. Yeah, that was okay. really the only reason. It started to get a little dangerous. So 
I said that's it. Yeah, that, that sounds like it could mm-hmm. be pretty scary. Well, we could talk about that, too, later, about the bike oh, and yeah, yeah. everything. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. But that's okay. a great question. Okay. Yeah. All right, this one's from Caleb Satterfield. Okay. Uh, he is a junior, at, or he's going to be a junior this at This is good. Men. These are exciting times um, to be a swimmer when uh, you're a junior in high school. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. And and these kids are asking phenomenal questions. Yeah, this is good. Because I said earlier in the week, I said, I love to swim. Like, I have a pool at my house, uh-huh. you know, all that stuff. But I swim for recreation right. and for fun. And I told Joe to not die. Uh-huh. Yeah, these kids don't swim for fun. Yeah, I guarantee these it. These kids yeah. are, are just good. You're swimming for survival. <laughs> so my his question, uh, Caleb's question is, yeah. um, how did you prepare yourself mentally prior to a big race? Yeah, okay, so let's take trials in 96, right? So I had been, like I said, I'd been to trials two times before that, so I knew what was coming, so you got to get prepared, right? Mm-hmm. you got to know, even if you've never been to the that pool before, right? It doesn't really matter. Um, we, I, I think that the reason that you go to practice, some people call it workout, but I just grew up calling it practice is because yeah. you practice every day of what you're going to do in a meet. Um, and that's physically, right? But mentally, it took me a long time to get confident in myself. I think that the biggest, the biggest hurdle that most people have to get over in I don't know about all athletics, but at least in swimming, is your own head. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you got to you got to get wrapped around that and understand that the only thing holding you back is you. So if you get comfortable, I don't know if you've ever heard this, if you get comfortable with being uncomfortable, yep. you'll you'll succeed in anything that you want to do. So if you're a little bit afraid or nervous, that's fine. But understand that. All you got to do is get through it, and you'll be successful. Okay. So that's really kind of how I prepared. There was no, like, yeah, right, kind of right. moment. It's not okay. like that. Yeah. Just you got to have confidence. You got to you gotta get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And you can practice all of that at workout. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and just I always thought that, you know, I did everything that I could do. Okay? Like looking back. I lifted weights. I went to practice every day. You know, I did everything right. I did all my drills and stuff like that. So I had the confidence in that, and then you just got to get through your head. And believe me, it wasn't easy. Again, it was always like they'd always mispronounce my name when they would, like, introduce me, and it was like, God dang it, like, (laughs) come on. Like, you know, and then I would just think, like, oh, my God, I'm just that, you know, Valerio. They couldn't even say Valerio, you know, from Youngstown. And it's like you got to get over that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You have just – if I can do it, Anybody out there can do it. Anybody on that sheet of paper that you have can do it because there's no reason why I should have, you know, made the Olympics coming from where I came I, from and all of that stuff. I mean, I think that's amazing advice. Yeah. Not just in the pool, but yeah. in life, really, yeah, too. Yeah, really. You know? it's, it's, you know, and you can do whatever you want. You just have to kind of, keep, again, keep your head down, you know, be confident and, and get uncomfortable with, you know, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Awesome. Yeah. Great advice. Yeah. Um, all right, next question. Another boy, too. All right. Owen Lee. Um, Owen. Owen is a uh, freshman at Boardman. All right. Also at the Applewood Swim Club Good. and Penguin Swimming USA team. Okay. So he says, aside from your training, was there any kind of nutritional? And this was one of my questions. Yeah. So I'm glad he asked this. Is there any kind of nutritional guide you used while you were swimming, or uh, you know, swimming or still training today, really, or doing whatever? You yeah. Did? Back then, um, no, because I was younger and always tall, always skinny. Um, I ate healthy for sure. Yeah. Like even in high school, you know, we always ate healthy, but it wasn't like I didn't have candy bars and you know crap yeah. like that. But I think nowadays, with all the the, the stuff that we know about food and um, mm-hmm. where to get your energy from, and you know, instead of eating a candy bar, you know, maybe grab some fruit and stuff like that. So um, nowadays, yes, um, I definitely watch what I eat. But I'm you know I'm older. If I was a freshman in high school, I mean, we ate ice cream and right. all that stuff. But I do think. Um, the reason that um, sport ha- like the sport of swimming has gotten faster and faster is that people have more knowledge now, whether it's, you know, like I said, I didn't really do dry land. I barely lifted weights until I got to college. So you start doing all that stuff at an earlier age and eating well. Imagine if I didn't eat all that ice cream and crap, and, you know, <laughs> right. in, in middle school and high school. So, yeah, I think it's important to um, know what's out there, but also know your body and mm-hmm. know how you react. Like I don't drink, like I told you, I don't drink caffeine I because – I'll be off the off the walls here. So you got to know you. You mm-hmm. really got to know you. And I don't know if I would have known me as a freshman in high school. That's a little bit young. But your parents should know, you know, 
what works for you and what doesn't because it's almost what works for them and what doesn't. So Good when you're point. younger, look at your parents and 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 see what they do and what works for them and it'll probably it'll be a good way to start. Let's put it that way. Okay. Yeah, and, and developing those habits earlier yeah. on is mm-hmm. so so important. I agree. Um, okay, so Julia uh, Basista. Okay. She's going uh, she's a sophomore. Do you have any advice for transitioning into longer races such as 100s 200s or any tip on how to calm your nerves you you kind of already answered the one question about calming your nerves yeah but um how, how about transitioning from a shorter so if sprint? she's transitioning to 100 that means that she only swims the 50 which is fantastic that means she's like a drop dead sprinter um okay i'll give you a, i'll give you a, a good tip to calm your nerves when you're at a meet um You know, it's great that we have lanes, right? Like, I'm in Mm -hmm. lane four, you're in lane five. The best thing to do is when you're standing there, and you know, before it's your time to race, and, like, my dad would always be like, I don't want you talking to any of those girls behind the blocks, (laughs) right? This is your time to focus, right? I want you sitting there and getting ready for, like, the 100 free, and you think about what you're going to do. And so I would never talk to anybody. I'm like, I can't talk to you. My dad's watching. (laughs) Don't don't talk to me. But, you know, but it was a good point. Like I said, he was really, you know, he was really smart about athletics and about racing. My mm-hmm. dad drag raced, you know, he, he, oh. he did a lot of drag racing. Okay. So he, he knew how to focus and, and, you know, and do that kind of stuff. So that got transferred to me. But when you're behind the blocks, remember, if you're, let's say you're in lane four, that's all you need to worry about. So if you just stand there and think, okay, everything between these two lane lines is all me. Don't worry about her or him or whoever's sure. in, right? Or if you're in lane one, which is even a harder um, scenario, right? You're in lane one. Don't worry about who's in lane four. Just focus on you and worry about you. Why waste your energy? Why would I waste my energy on on her, mm-hmm. right? It's all got to be about me. Like, be selfish. Like, it's all about you. So focus. And if you're focusing hard enough, you're not going to be nervous because you're thinking about, okay, I got to I gotta get a good start. My coach said to do this. I got it. When I dive in, I got to do this. And then I'm going to try to really work that like third 50 or whatever your, whatever your plan is. You got to have a plan. Um, transitioning from like a 50 to whatever, 100 to 200 to uh, 500. It's going to take some time. Mm-hmm. It's going to, um, you know, there's, there's the saying like, you can't just go out and run a marathon, right? You got to, sure. you got to, you got to train and you got to learn how to do it. Um, but Remember, I said that I, I trained distance and I swam the 50 to, like, the, the mile. Um, you got to figure it out. It's going to be different. And it's going to take, some, like I said, it's going to take some time. That's a good question. That because is, you're yeah. going to, if all you know is how to sprint, you're going to have to swim a lot of 500s to figure out how to do it. You can do it. Mm-hmm. If your goal is to break five minutes in a 500, I guarantee you can do it. But you're going to fail a few times because you're going to go out too hard and you're not going to have it or you're going to go out too easy and you're going to have too much gas at the end. So you're just going to have to figure those things out. But if if you swim freestyle, like I'm sure she swims freestyle if she's going to move to distance or even if she doesn't, um, you're just going to have to take some time and figure it out. And a lot of times you go to meets to learn that kind of stuff, right? Like when you go to local meets, that's the time to figure that stuff out so that when you go to a championship meet, now you're ready to go. Right, there's no messing around. We're not playing sure. around. We're not, you know. But when you go to local meets, that's when you you figure that stuff out. I mean, for me, never being like I've yeah, never I'm been not in the talking, competitive I'm swimming. Like talking no, down. no, I love it because I'm like I'm taking some mental notes here. I'm like, right. This this is just good advice right. in life, really. Yeah. Too. I mean, so you know, should you, do some TED talks out of my life. <laughs> TED Talks, yeah. I'll get right on that. <laughs> um, so, so good. Um, this next question Uh-oh. is from Mary Malone. She's actually a seventh grader, um, and she swims at Applewood Swim Club, okay. but swims for the Neptunes down here. Okay. Um, who inspired you to become a swimmer? I, I think I know the answer, but... Yeah, it wasn't... Okay, when you're five and your dad tells you, like, you're going down to the YWCA and you're going to swim after practice every day, there really was no inspiration back then. I didn't know. I mean, I'm five. Right. I don't even know what the, I mean, I, (laughs) let's see, I remember watching 76, so I would have been seven, like, Mm -hmm. right when 76 Olympics went off. So I vaguely remember certain things about it, but I don't really remember knowing, like, what the Olympics were were sure. i mean it was just this thing that was on tv and you know we sports were always it was always on at home um but you know my sister swam and and you know, like i said she was six years older than me and 
I would watch, we would go to the state meet. It was in, yeah. I think it was in Columbus at the time, or maybe districts were in Columbus. And, you know, so I would watch her and she would go to um, nationals. And then, like, I got to go to California because she had to go to a meet in California. And so the, I, I would say my sister a lot. And then um, if it had to be a swimmer, it would have been Tracy Calkins, who was like a famous, you know, she was back in 80 and 84. And okay. it would have been like, she would have been like the Ledecky of today. So sure. if you look up to Katie Ledecky, I would have looked up to Tracy Calkins or good. some of the girls from 76, like on the relay, like Shirley Babishoff and girls like that. Okay. And that was early on in women's, you know, women's sports for swimming. Those, those girls... I highly doubt they really swam in college. Uh, Tracy Hawkins would have, but earlier they, they there was no women's. You know, it was like interesting. Yeah, so it okay. was really at the forefront those those women. So yeah. So they were sort so of I'm like really the pioneers old. of the sport. Y yeah, really, yeah. It wasn't way. there wasn't much women's. I mean, I couldn't name a maybe a seventy two Olympian female, but seventy six, yes. Okay. So okay. Yeah. And then um, her second part to that question is, what do you feel is the most important part of a race and why? Like the start, the turn, the kickoff? Or? I think it depends on what race you're swimming. Um, if it was a 50 and the 100, I would say definitely the start. And my starts were horrible just because I was so, <laughs> like, it, it, but it didn't matter, right? Like I was tall and, and shorter girls have more jump and stuff like that. But I, I would always get people at the finish. Um, I would say for shorter events, for sprints, um, you got to get off the blocks, right? You, you got to go. And you got to get off the wall. If you're swimming a 200, um, nowadays a 200 is really like a sprint, so you got to know what you're doing. 200 is probably the hardest race because it's really a, a like a two minute sprint, which is which is hard. If it's a 500 or more, you got to know pace. Like you got to know, you you should definitely be able to in practice. Do a set and know your pace without know what you're doing without looking at the clock. Sure. So if, if your coach says, "Okay, I want you to do five 100s and I and I want you to hold five minutes and you're not going to look at the clock. I'm just mm -hmm. going to tell you when to go." You should be able to do that. Like you should know your speed. It would be like driving and you and you cover up the speedometer and I want you to like I want you to go 35. Now I want you to go 45. And you got to know how where the car is. So that's what I would say. That okay. you, it depends on the race. But, and you should definitely know that. And if you don't, you should talk to your coach and see what he says about what is like some key things. Like, because if it's a 50, you can't be like, okay, I got to get a good start. Then I got to break out. Then I got to get to the wall. Then I got to do a turn because it's going to be over before it's like, sure. 20, you know, we're talking like under 30 seconds. So some, t some people say, I don't think at all. Like when the gun goes off, mm -hmm. I just go. And some people are like, no, I need something to focus on because if I don't focus on this, I'm focusing on them. Sure. All right. So it depends on what kind of athlete you are, and I think your coach would know that, if, you know, after watching you race. Okay. All right. Very yeah. good. Um, and the final question from a swimmer, Ella Miller, okay. who is the youngest of the group. She's only in sixth grade. Okay. Um, what did you do to prepare for those bigger races, and what was your favorite events? So I was born to swim the 200 free, for sure, and I don't like it. Um, <laughs> so uh, my favorite event was always the 100 free. Isn't that true, though? Like, you're, the thing you're best at isn't <laughs> know, necessarily like, your no. favorite thing? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so born to swim the 200, um, like the 100 the best. 50 is the easiest, but I'm not t I was never talented enough to swim the 50. Like, okay. I don't have drop-dead speed, right? Okay. Like, I was really, really good, like, really talented but like there are uber talents right like like um katie ledecky sure right like uh what's his name phelps mm -hmm. right those people are super duper uber right talented i'm in the like sub talent category so seriously i mean i, th I think we made i know but but <laughs> but i'm telling you in la every other person has you know there's, there's so many olympians around you, you what are so, we just I, I, I know i know but um yeah so you know you just um what was the question what were we doing <laughs> what did you do to prepare uh, for to the prepare big yeah to the for the big ones yeah so you just i think it gets to a point where when i was younger like i don't remember in high school and college like Especially in high school, like, who prepares? Like, you just get up on the block and go. You're like, 16, like, what could happen? It was like, it was like you were, I was unstoppable. It was like, okay, yeah, I would win yeah. this, and I would win that, and it was, you know, looking back. I mean, it was nerve-wracking at times, but um, like I said earlier, you, you got to do the work, mm -hmm. okay? Unless you're one of the Ubers. Okay, so if you're an Uber, and I don't know what that is, because I was never like that. Like, I worked hard. Yeah. I really did. I worked hard to get to college. I worked hard for this. You know, I wasn't one of those 
people who are like, well, oh, I'm just going to stand up here and, you know, <laughs> let's do the 100 free and see what happens. And sure, I would win. Sure. Like, you know, when you ever see, the, I don't know if you guys watch swimming, but sometimes there are like the Ubers who touch the wall and they go, oh. Oh my God, look at how fast I went. Like, who does that? Like, it's never a surprise. Like, it was, you know, it was like, oh, thank, like, oh, okay, it worked. Like, I did all that work. So, you do the work, you prepare mentally, keep your focus on you, and, and you can't go wrong. Okay. Yeah, okay. you really can't. All right, very good. Yeah. All right, and I have three more questions That's from cool. the coaches. All right, oh boy, so, here we go. Um, this, is from, this is from the head coach, and, and by the way, Carlo, off, offset, um, Melanie has oh yeah, we got the t-shirts. Shirts. So we're gonna Melanie's gonna take some pictures with yeah. them later. So, we'll post them. So we will get those to you guys. Um, so this is from Carlo Corden. He's the boardman okay. swim team head coach. Okay. So um, his question for you is: How did you eventually transition into Ironman competitions? And did you feel like this was your next big challenge? And then also, and I'll okay, bring, let's, come let's, back to yeah. this. Do you want to just answer? Let's that do one? that one first. Okay. All okay. Right. So how did I get to Ironman? So yeah, it was. You know, when I, um, when I, in 2000, when I kind of officially retired from swimming, even though I kept swimming, um, but, you know, I had to get a job, right? Yeah. And um, it was hard. I, I would assume that it was like retiring from a job, right? Like, what are you going to do? This was my whole life. I was from five until, right. whatever, 31. I, I That's all I knew. So I really had to to let go of swimming, and I, I didn't though, but like I, I had to because I had to get a job and I had to know what it was like to, to, to be just normal, mm -hmm. okay? Because mm -hmm. my life was not normal. I, I always tell people that it was really hard. Um, and I'm sure a lot of those kids, they're not gonna ask this question, but you know, I was underwater for most of my life. And I know that sounds funny, but I missed a lot. I missed a lot. Um, you know, like, I don't want to say that I was stunted in any way, but in some ways I was like, I, I didn't do all that fun stuff. I, I never went on spring break. I never, you, know, you can, you can just, you know, you can just imagine like what I missed out on. But again, looking back, I don't really care now. Sure. I really don't. But, um, so the transition was that I had secured my, I, I, I'm in clinical research, right, oncology clinical research, and I secured my first job ever, like a real job, okay, not lifeguarding and not that stuff. And so once I felt that my life, it took about a year or two, my life was kind of back on track, like a normal life. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I kept swimming, but I was swimming more and more. And then I, like I said earlier, I got this idea, like, you know, am, can I, can I do other sports? Like mm -hmm. if I'm so uber not uber talented, but if I'm so talented in swimming, maybe I could run or, you know, and so that's kind of how I fell into triathlons. And it wasn't to be the next, like it wasn't to make the Olympics in triathlon at all. I raced Ironman for Timex for about, it took me about two, three years to learn how to cycle and learn how to run. And I did probably a handful of races. And then it was just time to move on. Like I said, people were getting hit left and right. And yeah, that's um, crazy. It just it just wasn't for me. It really consumed a lot more of my life than swimming did. And so now I was like, you know what? I'm getting stuck in this. I, it's kind of the underwater analogy, but I was always on a bike or I was running. I was sure. always alone. And I was like, this is going down a bad hole and I need to get out of it because I spent since I was five doing that. So mm -hmm. it was almost like I was afraid to like face life. And this was like a cop out again. And so I was like, no, I'm done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was, a, it was a big learning lesson. I'm not saying that triathlons are bad or anything like that, right? More power to you. But I had had a, a, a long life of missing out on things. And yeah. here I am again, constantly training, and I'm not socializing with people, and I'm not doing the things that I should be doing when I'm like well, yeah, 30 and, years old. And I think people, you know, they see the gold medal. They see you in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. They see you in the magazines. But they don't appreciate or understand all it's a lot. Sacrifice it's a lot. My parents sacrificed up. a lot, you know, and not just driving me to practice every day, but they really did sacrifice a lot. You know, my mom would be the first to tell you that, you know, Tony and I really, you know, it was it was hard on us. And and remember, I was the second one, so they, I, sure. it was kind of like they learned from my sister, and then it was, then we really ramped things up for mm -hmm. me. So, okay, yeah. That's kind of depressing. I mean, that sounds kind of bad, but I'm just, you know, for these kids and for these kids' parents, it's a lot of commitment. It really is. Right. Um, and 
again, it's just my story. Maybe you're uber talented and you just step up and things happen and you know like you win all the time and you know your parents are you know fancy footloose and fancy free and everything like that. But that wasn't the case for the Volarios. It was hard work for everybody involved. Uh, yeah, and, I mean, and look where it got you. Though. Yeah, I mean, that's like, again, I just look. You know, it's like okay, that's fine, whatever. No, and, that's my story. And, and I think though the sacrifice though is is not to be swept under the rug. That's just amazing yeah, what, what you guys have to lot. do. All right, second um, part. Second part is since he, he's obviously a high school yeah. swim coach, so he has some swimmers with, um, you know, college yeah. pursuits. So uh, what advice would you give to kids that would like to continue their career competitively swimming uh -huh. in college? In college. Um, obviously make sure you get good grades. Do well. I don't know. Do they, I, I know there's a whole SAT thing and all that stuff, but whatever you got to do, to, you know, for your college entrance stuff, do it, try to do the best you can. Look around, um, look at colleges that you wanna go to, right? Like, let's say these are your colleges and go one step above, right? And go one step below. So, uh, let okay, let's say, okay, let's say that, you know, you grow up in Youngstown and I went to UVA, I went to the University of Virginia. Um, I want to say that my like top my five colleges were like Virginia, UNC. Um, I don't even remember. I really don't remember. But um, California was out of the question. My mom and dad okay. loved to watch me swim, sure. um, so it had to be. We wanted it closer. I wanted it closer, but I didn't want to go to Ohio State because it wasn't far enough. Sure. Right. So you got to think about all those things. Um, what kind of what kind of program do you want to go to? Do you do you want it? Maybe maybe you have to take less less scholarship and go to a Division One. Maybe you go to a great Division Three school. Kenyon is just down the road. Mm -hmm. It's a great swimming school. Great you know great atmosphere. Everything like that. You know money played a part in in decisions. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. I would definitely consider you know make sure you talk to your parents. They know you the best. Mm -hmm. If you're a kid who. UCLA is not going to be for you. Like you're not going to the big city of LA alone. I, w I certainly wasn't going to do it. We went on. Rec this is a funny story. We went on recruiting trips. Um, my sister had a meet in LA. This is a funny story. And um, do we have time? Do you want? Oh, to you got okay. Yeah, go for it. So we go to a meet in LA. She has a swim meet. And while we're there, she's in high school. While we're there, we're going to look at USC and UCLA. Okay. Okay. Because she, she, you know, she wanted to go to Division One school. So we go. We're in LA. And so my dad, me, dad, mom, me, and you know, we're in the in this rent a car in L.A. and we're at USC and there's this hell, there's all these helicopters and we're like, what, what is going on? And there's a guy on the ground. There's cop cars. There's rifles. They got a guy on the ground. My dad's like, you're not going to USC. <laughs> we're out of here. There's there's cop there's copters flying around. This is like in '81, right? Yeah. Like I don't think LA is really that great. So. <laughs> She, he, my dad's like, okay, you're not going to USC, and you're not going to USC, right? And I'm like, you know, I'm in like sixth grade. I'm like, I don't even know where we are. Like, are we going to Disneyland? Like, what's, you know, what's going on? And so, you know, UCL, uh, UCLA was uh, obviously a better, a, a better, you know, thing. But you know, you you got to know. My dad knew my kids are not going to. to no offense against USC, but my kids aren't built for this kind of college, like sure. this kind of campus. Yeah. So you got to know, and there there is a school out there for everyone. Um, you just got to find it. Yeah. And listen, if you make a mistake, just go to another school. Mm -hmm. If you go and it's not for you or you don't, you know, the team isn't working out or whatever, transfer. What, what, what's the big deal? Okay. So that's that's what I think. Great advice. Yeah, find okay. your fit. Yeah. Find your fit. Yeah. Um, and uh, this next one's from Chad D'Angelo, another coach at Boardman. Okay. Um, so he, you know, he actually teaches high school as okay. well. So, you know, especially he said with social media and distractions, when you were training, how did you balance your swim life and social life? We kind of touched on uh, that earlier. I thought it was going to say, how did I balance swimming and social media? <laughs> and I did it because we didn't have any. When I went to the Olympics, we got a beeper. Okay. That was like the big thing. Like we got a beeper. Like a pager? Like a pager. A oh, wow. pager. Okay. Yeah. And so um, I forget what you do. Like my friends could page me and then I had to get to a pay phone and call a number and then the lady would give me their message. It was like this whole We'll like, have to put a disclaimer for like any high school kids watching yeah. what a pager actually uh, yeah, is. Exactly, yeah. You know, look up <laughs> pager and it had Olympic rings on. It was very cool. It's like this big, you put it on your belt. And yeah, so that's what I that's what we got at the Olympics. So um you know my friends once I got to high school, my friends were all swimmers. 
And I think that helps um, when not to not to like exclude people just because yeah, they don't swim. Right. Like, look, I can't be your friend because you're not <laughs> on the swim team. I mean, you should be have a, a, a well balanced, you know, group of friends. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know. I guess I was lucky. Mm-hmm. You know, they all swam. Not to say that there weren't like bad seeds or like, hey, let's go like do this because you know sure. we did we did some some stuff, but. Um, I would assume that nowadays it's very, very hard with with social media, yeah. with um, just everything that goes on. I would not want to be in high school right now, um, especially now with COVID and all that stuff mm-hmm. too. So um, you got to surround yourself with not only things you like. I think that, and this is a good tip too, um, if you want to be good, you got to surround yourself with people who are just as good or better than you. So whether that means you swim next to the girl or the boy who is fast, but you got to put yourself next to people who are bigger, faster, stronger, smarter, and then it'll make you a better person. So, awesome. I don't know. That's my competition. Breeds yeah, you got to You got to You got to put yourself, and then I don't know. Just take their phone away. I don't know. Yeah, right. I yeah. Mean, I don't know. I, I mean, social media and stuff is so great in some ways, but it's so debilitating. Like it's I can't ima- crutch Like ways. I've never gone to a meet and had to like put my phone away. Like we didn't have phones, mm-hmm. so I couldn't imagine that distraction. Remember, like lane. I'm in lane four, and it's just this. It's exactly. not my phone and all that other stuff. So that that's a that's yeah. You almost that's a separate style of the, training. Almost, yeah, right that there. is. But I think if you surround yourself, if if you're lucky enough to get those kids to 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 surround themselves with kids that are like them, it's it's a lot easier. Okay, all right. Yeah. And a couple messages fight. from Facebook. Uh, oh, we we have Carlo uh, that said that your message to these kids are great. So oh, complimented cool. your right, message. Uh, CJ said a hundred percent. If you don't like the school, just transfer. Good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like your advice about the fit. For you. Yeah. Like, every kid's going to have yeah. a different fit. And listen, I, I don't, you know, I, I can't even remember what schools I was looking at, but I guarantee you that my mom and dad had a lot of say in, in where I was going, you know, or what they thought, you know. Like I said, my dad knew, you know, basket, the school was, like, based on how good their basketball team was. Real, and you know what I mean? Sure, like, yeah. you know, don't you want to go to Duke? Like, that would be fun. <laughs> like, you know, why don't you go to Duke? We can, you know, I'll come down and we can watch basketball or whatever. Yeah, UNC yeah. and, you know, UVA was okay, but... You know, your parents, and, and, uh, you know, maybe your parents don't know, but you got to get, like I said, you got to, you got to get with people who know, right? So you got to figure it out that we have this, the team that I swim with now, they're a bunch of, they're just a bunch, they're all over the place. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a pro, um, it's a pro swim team. So they're all training for trials. They're from all different countries. And our coach is always like, FIO. This set is FIO. Figure it out. Oh, okay. FIO. Okay. So you got to figure it out. I'm going to borrow that F-I-O. one. I like that one. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, FIO. Yeah. That's Dave Saylor. So <laughs> okay. give him credit. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's yeah. good. All right, final question from the Boardman okay. uh, swim team here. So this is from Chelsea D'Angelo, another coach on okay. the team. Um, so she's been coaching for the past three years, and she says she loves to watch the progress of athletes that yeah. commit uh, to this really tough sport. So her question is, how did your training change from being like a younger rec swimmer uh-huh. to basically one of the fastest women in the world? And when did you realize, like at what age did you realize like how talented you were? Mm-hmm. So uh, I think it changed, <clears throat> It cha- there were stages. So remember, I was at the YW just around the corner, yep. just going back and forth at five. Okay, so that was just... You know, if you if you throw a kid into something that young, I mean, how are they not going to, like, pick stuff up? Remember, right, my goggles right. are like this. I'm like, you know, my eyes are bloody red because, you know, the chlorine and everything. And then, um, you know, we moved to different teams around. They're, they're no longer, you know, they're no longer around. But, um, again, I was always the youngest swimming with kids who were older. And, mm-hmm. and I really do think that that was a lot of – that really started me off on a good foot. Okay, so I'm five swimming with 10-year-olds. Then I'm 10 swimming with 13-year-olds, right? Then I'm in, you know, you know, I was fortunate enough to go to Hawken, and so that was a really a level up. And these kids swam more than I did. Like, I didn't, no kids did what I did. So that was another level up. Then you get to college, and now you're a freshman, and it's like, Really, we're gonna do ten th- like I yeah. we did ten thousand yards one workout, and I was like, Jeez. oh my god, like this is this like does this ever stop? Like, is it gonna get you know worse and worse? But when did I know? Um, 
I was always, okay, let's just be real. I was always fast when I was younger, right? Like, I, you know, it was, you know, it, there was this joke where I would come and, and be like, oh, I won, I won. And my mom's like, you won your heat, honey. You didn't <laughs> win. The, don't tell people you won because you won your heat, right? They had to explain it to mm -hmm. me. And then there was a time where, you know, then I started really winning. Like, I was mm -hmm. winning, you know, so now I'm 10, 11, 12, and I'm really winning. And then we had to have the talk, like, you just win, and you accept your award, and you don't talk to people. Like, you don't brag about it. You don't remember I said, you know, we're humble. humble and we're, yeah. So we had that talk, right? But um, high school was a big leap. That was a big, like, Okay, like I just won every event at the Ohio High School. Like I'm, I was the fastest hundred freestyler coming out of Ohio in 1987. Wow. Okay, so I'm the number one like hundred freestyler. I'm a junior in high school. Now, I laid it like I laid it down. And remember, I said my my goal at that time was to get a full ride at a Division One school. Mm -hmm. So work backwards, right? So sure. so work backwards when you're a junior you got to start laying it down right because people are going to start looking at you mm -hmm. became a senior still winning won kind of was able to go wherever i wanted uh not so much money out west for me but more money here swam in, in college college was tough i was still growing then i was growing other ways right like you know it, it was just this whole it was all over the place um I, okay, so for people out there who know swimming, the day I knew, and w w I was I trained for the Olympics um, at the University of Arizona. Okay. okay. So I was living in Tucson. I'd lived all over the place, but training for the Olympics, I'm in Arizona, I'm in Tucson, and it's Saturday. I know this by heart. Um, we did a set. It was 2100s, long course on two minutes. Every other 100 was fast. I went under a minute for every fast 100 that I did. Okay. And one of the coaches was an Olympian um, from 76, maybe. Okay. And I was done, and he looked at me, and he goes, that's a set that an Olympian does. And I thought, I could really do this. Yeah, right? Like right. I had like six months before trials, and I laid this down, and that's really quick at the time. And that's when I knew. So okay. I, was, I was 26 when I knew, and I made the Olympics at 27. So to answer that question, it was a long time from five years old to 26 to when I knew. But, you but it, I did it in time. Like <laughs> yeah, I tell you, know, right. it doesn't matter if it happens five minutes before the race, as long as you figure it out, right? F I O. But it eventually figure just it clicked out. And it you just got clicked, it. and then I got it. And and like I said, so moving backwards, there were things that had to be done. You know, if if I had to make the national team in in in, I made it in '93. I had to make it in '95. If I'm not going to be on the national team in '95, well, then how in the crap am I going to make the how am I going to make the Olympic team in '96? Sure. Right? If I'm not one of the top. 800 freestylers in the U.S. in 94, 95, how am I going to be top four in 96? Mm -hmm. So that's why I say you always need to look at your goal, work backwards, and make sure you're at the step where you need to be because you're not going to – I mean, let's be honest. You're not going to be fourth in – okay, maybe you do. Maybe you're, again, oh, I'm just going to swim the 100 free. Maybe I'll get fourth <laughs> even though I'm seated 20th, right? You're not going to – it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. Yeah. So that's when I knew. I knew when I was 26. Hard work pays off. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit, of, you know, still about swimming, All but right. a little bit more about, like, your life and what you're doing now. So okay. you had mentioned you're working for Johnson & Johnson. I do. And I work for Janssen specifically. Janssen. Okay. Yeah. So we yeah. know all about what's yeah. going on in our real life. We do. We've heard... The good and the bad. You want to know the, the inside scoop? Uh, you no, can, I got yeah. not. I got How nothing. about you just tell us what you're comfortable saying with what you're yeah. doing with J and J? Yeah. So I, um, like I J &J said, J and J and J, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. Sort of. So, um, like I said, uh, after 2000, I, I walked away from UVA with um, I have a master's in exercise physiology, and I started working in clinical research uh, for a different uh, pharmaceutical company, and I've done it ever since. So that was 2000. It's I've done it now for over 20 years. Wow. Um, about five years ago, I secured a job with Johnson & Johnson, but I work in oncology, mm -hmm. so not um, <laughs> not viruses. Not, yeah, no. <laughs> but it was it was very exciting. It's very exciting to be to, to work at J and J, and I do work at I, I am employed by Janssen, yep. um, and I love it. It's a great company. Um, I 
you know, as far as the vaccine goes, mm-hmm. to each his own. Exactly. I got it. I got the J&J vaccine. I'm very happy with it. Um, if you want to get vaccinated, that's fine. If you don't, I'm fine with that, too. Mm-hmm. You know, have at it. So, um, but it, it was very exciting. I'm very proud. You know, I, I, I love being part of a team. I've always been part of a team. And so now Johnson & Johnson is my team, and I'm 100% behind them. I mean, why wouldn't I be? I right. wouldn't be there if I wasn't. So uh, that's how I look at it. You know, okay. it's just another team that I belong to. So, yeah. yeah. So looking at your sort of your bio a little bit, too, you've lived in New Everywhere. York City. You've uh-huh. lived you're in L.A. now. Uh-huh. You've lived in Scottsdale, other places. Yeah. What What's your favorite part of the country you've been in mm. or, or lived? I in? mean, you know, uh, I love coming home. There, there's mm-hmm. nothing like home, but let's not let's not count home. Um, New York was tough. It was tough. Tough. And this this is all before COVID, right? Like this mm-hmm. is just normal times. Sure. New York was tough, but I wanted to, I really wanted to see what it was like to live in a big city, and it's not for me. Um, I do live in LA now, but we live at the beach, so I'm not really in the city. Um, I mean, I love LA. I mm-hmm. really do. It has everything. I love sports. We like to go to Lakers games. You know, um, Le- LeBron signed with the Lake. You know, he he agreed to come to the Lakers on my husband's birthday. So that's like a, so my husband's th- like he loves yeah. LeBron. You know. Um, even though he says we're a Kuzma family, I'm like, we're not a Kuzma <laughs> family. I'm like, we're not. I'm like, if anything, we're a LeBron family. But um, so it's great. You know, so we, 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 lo- we love to go to Laker games. Not now, but um, big sports fans um, like to go to concerts. We like the beach. Um, we both swim. Um, we both swim for Nova Aquatics down in Irvine, so we still train, and our goals are to, you know, I have a world record in Masters, and so does my husband, and so that's really what we, we swim for now is to, you know, as we move up in our age groups and things like that, but that's like, my, that's my goal now. Okay. Yeah, and it's still the same. I work backwards from it, and yeah. you know, yeah. And so how did you two meet? We met at swim practice. Okay. Um, he was in the fast lane and I was in the, the second to fast lane only because I was, you know, I'm always kind of like, I, I can't get too deep into swimming because it'll just, mm-hmm. it'll just consume me again. Yeah. And uh, a, a, a girl at practice like, you know, you should, you should, you know, you should, you and Bruce should go on a date and the timing just wasn't right. But then it was. And um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, the first day I show up in L.A. to practice, he's going to kill me. <laughs> but he, um, I go, I just, I, I wasn't going to swim. I just go to practice to see what's what. It's, it's a great way to meet people when you move to a city, right? And yeah. so these, they're all done with practice. And um, one of the guys who swims was the coach. And I said, oh, you know, I just moved here. And um, I just wanted to see what practice was all about. I know you have all the, you know, it's L.A. There's practices everywhere. And this, this one guy was really nice. And this other guy sitting at the table, who's now my husband, he, like, puts his feet up. And he's like... So what have you done in swimming? Like, you know, where, where have you been? And I'm like, what a jerk. Like, who is this guy? Like, what have I done? And me, humble, from yeah. Camel, Ohio, I'm like, I went to the Olympics in 96 and I have a gold medal. What about you? <laughs> and he was like, uh, I, I was a whack champion at Utah. Uh, and I was like, and then we ended up we ended up getting married. So that's, that's like awesome. our funny story. That's yeah, I was really like, cool. It's like, who is this jerk? What have I done? What have you done? Yeah. So, I love it. Yeah. So I... I have um, I have sort of an Olympic question, sort of. Um, no Olympic so. questions. No, I'm not <laughs> answering. <laughs> All right, so here, here's my. So when you're obviously when you're an Olympian. Uh-huh. Um, so let's just say from anywhere from that 88 to 96 period or okay. 88 to 2000. So obviously you're training to be in the Olympics. Right. Um, but what does an Olympian do besides training? When, or like when you're not training, you know what I'm saying. So from I put like, my pants on one leg at a time. <laughs> like, like I mean, do you do you have a job? I at sit, the time? Ar- I do sit you? around and I just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I just look at this. Do I have a job? Okay, so uh, when it depends. Um, when I, um, okay, let's talk about like things started getting serious in like '94. Okay, okay, for '96, mm-hmm. and I'd always had a job. Um, I. She's where am I? I graduated college in 91. I went to UVA. I uh, moved to South Florida to keep training, make my first national team in 93. Okay. Moved to Arizona, make another national team, make another national team. I'm always working. I would uh, when I was in Florida, I did ocean rescue, so I would go to I would work at the beach. Like okay. I made good money, right? Like yeah. but I was still able to go to practice two times a day when I moved to Scottsdale. I found a part-time job. I would answer phones at a it was at a multimedia company and I would work between practices. Um, 
And mom and dad, right, little support there. Like I said, they sacrificed a lot, you know, and money was part of it. Um, make the Olympics. I'm the first female signed by Nike. Okay, so now I, I start making some money. This is not like, you know, I'm not, this is money, but it's not like, a, you know, yeah. it's not It's not to live. You're not you know. retiring. No, I'm not retiring yeah. on my Nike money, let me tell you. <laughs> but I was the first female signed by Nike. Um, you get money from USA Swimming. We didn't have benefits back then. I think the, the kids oh, wow. now have benefits. There okay. was, it was, you know, it was pretty slim. Um, so I come back from the Olympics. First thing I do is I buy a washer and dryer because I never had one, and I, and I was so tired of going to go wash my clothes somewhere else. And it was like heaven. I'm like, I have a washer and dryer. <laughs> like, I made it. Like, look at me. I got this. And I got this. That's so awesome. I got the Kenmore. <laughs> Went to Sears, bought a washer and dryer. So, I mean, that's, I, you know, I wasn't living, you know, it wasn't like I was living the dream that everybody thinks it was. Yeah. But it was, you know, I was really happy to have a washer and dryer and, um, and that. That's that's awesome. Yeah. So in uh, you were in the '96 games, which were in Atlanta. Yes. How cool was that to be in your home country? For it was. That? It was fantastic. So I had, like I said, I'd made two uh, national teams before that, and we had meets. Uh, I had I had swam in meets in Japan a few times. So I'd been to Japan a couple times and Australia. Australia wasn't bad. It's a lot like it's a lot like the U.S. Um, but swimming in Japan was rough. Right, really? like, okay. and we had nice hotels and everything, but like the beds are like this big, <laughs> right? And the food is hard. It's hard. Mm -hmm. um, we had training camp in Hong Kong. I think I ate broccoli and spaghetti like every day because that was all I could really stomach. And they mm -hmm. would give us jars of peanut butter just to have protein, like because they, you know, they would sure. fly in jars of peanut butter for the team. It was really like rough. So, having the Olympics in the U.S. was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like I had friends that were there. My mom and dad. Um, got tickets to opening ceremonies. Like, it was really a cool experience. Really cool. So And I'll, easy. It was easy. Okay. Right? Because okay. it's, there's, you know, you're not in Japan. There's no yeah, language barrier. Sure. The food is normal. Everything was, it was, it was as easy as could be. So obviously, outside of winning the gold medal with your team, what was the most exciting part for you? Were you like, did you meet anybody that you were, you know, or was there any events that you went to outside of swimming? We went to, um, there was like a, uh, remember, this is like. Yeah, this, oh. <laughs> what? I think that was Surrey picked up oh, our Oh, that's voices. funny. <laughs> I was like, what? Um, um, so yeah. you could sign up for tickets, like for other events. So we went to like a track, a track event. Okay. It was tough though. Like it was, um. You know, there was, like, no secure. I don't think we had security, like, metal detectors. Huh. I don't think we did. Um, so it was pretty easy going. We were just, like, hanging out. It was yeah. great. Yeah. It was like being It was like being at Disney World. There was no money involved. Like, you didn't have to pay for it. Like, they had McDonald's, like, on um, in the village, and you just go and, like, help yourself. Like, you want 10 hamburgers? Take 10 hamburgers. It was like the, I just I think like, that's so funny. The, like, like, what is top, this? Like, the best oh, athletes in the world oh, are eating, like, eating like crashing crap. hamburgers. <laughs> See, but back then it wasn't, like, nutrition was just coming around and, yeah. like, people didn't eat bars or, like, mm -hmm. it really wasn't a thing back then. So, um, but, yeah, I don't really remember any, like, mm, there was nothing that really, the bomb went off. Remember? Yes. Do, you guys, do you guys remember well, that? Well, they made, yeah. made a movie about that, too, yeah, like Richard they did. Jewell. I yeah, believe. I wasn't in the, uh, whatever that was. We were not We were in Buckhead, and the bomb went off in, like, Centennial Plaza sure, and yeah. stuff like that. I will tell you, I have a good, I do have a good memory. So when I was swimming, like, done, I should have brought it. I might have it in my phone. My friend from high school was at the Olympics, and she was in um, Centennial Park, right? And they have a huge screen where yes. they would, like, right? She took, so I have this great picture of me finishing with my cap on. She's in Centennial Park, and it's on the big jumbo screen, and it's me. So that is a very cool, she just happened to be at the right place at the right time, and, awesome. it was, and that was really cool. Very, so, very yeah. cool. Yeah. That's okay. a good memory. All yeah. right. I like the McDonald's story. Though. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I'm trying to think what else was like. Yeah. There, you well, know. Celery doesn't do endorsements. So no. You got to no, yeah, no. shop for That's a great point. You, right? That's a yeah. great yeah. point. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned you went to track and field and stuff. Did you, yeah. um, were outside of swimming, like what would maybe your favorite sport to watch be? At the Olympics? At the Olympics or in general? You had mentioned Just, the Lakers. Yeah. So, so, yeah, we watch a lot of NBA, a lot of N um, NFL 
So when Super I Super Bowl in LA this year. Yeah, big. Um, Browns play the Chargers like uh, mm -hmm. October 10th, I think, okay. in LA. So we'll get tickets for that. Uh, Pittsburgh's coming too. Okay. Um, so funny story. Um, when I was in college, I took football as a class. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's a good way to get a couple credits. And yeah, how hard sure. could football be? And it, it covered both college, but mostly pro. So, and everybody laughed at me, right? Like, why are you? And it was like all full of football players. I was like, you dumb dumbs. Like, I'm in <laughs> class with all these guys, right? Like, I'm like one of the only girls. It totally paid off, right? So when we watch football, like, uh, like I know, uh, I think I know a little bit more than the average girl, and sure. and my husband loves it because I'm like, oh, did you see that call? That you know, whatever, and like, mm -hmm. it's really fun. And, and I'll just say stuff like, come on, whose wife knows this kind of stuff, right? <laughs> like, so and, and we and it's just it's just really fun. So I do like watching the NFL. We right now we love watching basketball. The Lakers kind of suck right now. Um, yeah, they're going to be in that playing tournament mm -hmm. with. Maybe Golden against Golden State too. Mm, it's gonna mm, be interesting. Yeah. But Anthony Davis and LeBron have been I love hurt the Anthony whole year. Davis, yeah. They've been hurt yeah. Like the whole year. My my favorites are probably Anthony Davis. Of course, do, how's LeBron? Do people are we LeBron fans here? I love LeBron. Yeah, it's and probably, he brought a title to Cleveland. Yeah. He can do no yeah. wrong. A little cold. Yeah, I think people here are like they love him or they hate him, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I love. I'm on the love. Support are, yeah, for I mean, I, I, how can you hate the guy? He's, I know. You know, he's fantastic. Um, Dwight Howard, I'm a big Dwight Howard fan. <sighs> can't get behind Dwight um, <laughs> Yeah. I can't support that one. Yeah. Um, who else? That's all right, like, though. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Oh, um, uh, Triple Double. Um, oh, Russ Westbrook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So when we drive to practice, he, um, he, I guess he's sponsored by a, a Hyundai dealer in okay. Orange County. So there's this big sign, and it's just this weird picture of him. He's like this, you know, and it's like top Hyundai salesman. I'm knowing, <laughs> but um, yeah, he's a, he's a good one. He might be the most freak athlete of all time, too. Right. See, he, so he's an Uber, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. You think LeBron's an Uber? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. right. But then there's mm -hmm. other guys who they're in the NBA, but they're not right. Ubers. Yeah. Right. Not a big Steph Curry thing. Okay. Like, I'm not a. I'm not. Well, into that's that. understandable. I'm not into that. Um, what about um, who else do I like? Uh, Jim, uh, place for the Heat. Jimmy Butler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Did you know he was homeless? He was homeless. Oh, I think before I, he went to college. I think I did know that. And then went to Marquette, became a star, yeah. came good to the NBA. Him. Yeah, and, I like, follow him on Instagram. Talk yeah, about, he's, you know, working yeah. your way up. Too, yeah, see? so amazing. Yeah, you can do amazing. it. Amazing. Right? Yeah, exactly. You can do it. Humble beginnings too, right? Yep. Like you yep. said. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I say football and basketball okay. are my top two. Uh, never got into hockey, never got into uh, uh, soccer. Um, UVA is really big in lacrosse, and when mm -hmm. I say that, my husband just laughs. He's like, what's lacrosse, right? We don't, you know. Right, but, right. Yeah, I mean, I like it, lacrosse. Lacrosse is becoming so popular yeah, yeah. Uh, across the country now. That's about it. I, I, watch, I mean, I like watching swimming for sure. Um, what else is the, That's about it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's – are you excited about the – because – with COVID last year, the Olympics got postponed to this year. So, yeah. is that something like you'll just sit down and watch swimming, or totally? Or, like, we, will you analyze it, or are you no, just a common fan? No, we just and we know a lot of people. Like, we know a lot of the people who swim, um, not just for the U.S. but for other countries because mm -hmm. we train with them. So yeah. it's fun, like seeing. And you know, I, obviously, I'm a lot older than them, but I've you know I've trained with them because we still like my husband. And I still swim, so yeah. it's fun to watch people that you know, whether they do well or not. And now you're, I'm at the age where. I like to watch it, and they, you know, you know, when the, if you lose, it kind of sucks. But I look at it like you made the even if you come in last right, place at the like, Olympics, you're yeah, still you like still a top be ten yeah, in the world. Yeah, you know? but when you're in it, it's not like that, right? <laughs> right. You're like, ah, yeah, you know. I know, I yeah. Know. So yeah. yeah, well, we're excited for it. I hope it goes off. I don't know where we stand right now as far as swimming goes. If it's going to be for reals or if it's you know, sure, sure. So we'll see. Well, let's let's play in two remote things in the future. I'm playing in one. In February, we're gonna we're gonna plan a remote trip out to LA okay. for when the Browns sure. are playing whoever in the Super Bowl, and then in seven years, I'm fast forwarding way forward. <laughs> okay, the Olympics. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Big goals, right? Right? Big goals. Brought me a pin. Brought you a pin. Yep. Um, LA, LA Olympic 28. Games 28. Yeah. So yeah, we'll be there. That's fantastic. We'll do a live show in 2028. Mark it on your calendar. Put up, Gus. We're on our way. <laughs> Come on. Come on I out. I love it. I yeah. love it. That'd be cool. So. Um, before you go to, uh, and before we wrap up, I had to ask you too because last yeah. week was your birthday. It was. You had mentioned you had oh there, yes spent some time at the Cecil Hotel. Yes. So if anybody has watched the ghost, or it's not a ghost hunter. It's a Netflix no. documentary. Yeah. Is it so? It, what are the, is that? Is it a documentary or is it just like a? I think it's. 
I don't know. It's like a four or five it's show. It's like a four series show. I've watched it like three, four times. It is creepy. My friend Susie, who she can't, she's just, she's my creepy friend. Okay. okay. So number one. <laughs> so all I wanted to do for my birthday was to go to the Cecil Hotel. And if you've watched it, it's a little overdone in the documentary. So it's not in that bad of an area in downtown LA, but she took me down there. We took pictures. It, um, it's not creepy at all. Did I you mean, stay overnight? No, it's okay. closed. Okay. It's closed. Oh, okay. And okay. she almost weaseled her way in there. It's under construction. And okay. she was talking to the foreman and he's like, you guys want to come in? And I'm like, I'm not going in that creep hole. Like, yeah, are you kidding right. me? But, um, it was fantastic. And we went to the last bookstore, which is where that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, I'm not into ghost hunters or anything like that, but, it was the the coolest. The thing that I took took away from that too was the elevator thing. Yeah, when that girl's in the elevator and she's like peeking I around. Know. It's like, and the, what and, the hell is going on? And the footage was cut, or they're showing yeah. that the footage was yeah. kind of shaky. And I think it was really oh, it was kind of a letdown when we went. We were both kind of like, really, this is mm -hmm. it? Like it's just like you know. But um, yeah, I love it. I've watched it like three times, okay. and I'll probably watch it again on the way home because I just love like looking at all the little details. And I it's in it. LA, and I then I posted it on Instagram, and I got so many people like, "Oh my god, you went to the Cecil <laughs> Hotel!" Like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" So it was hilarious. So, yes, so cool. Yeah, so um, I'm into that. I got yeah. a question for you. Yeah, so we're we're gonna take a trip out uh, west coast uh, this summer, and I want to hit the uh, the Winchester House. Have you ever been to Winchester? No, House? where is it? It's in it's in California. It's in Northern California. Oh, Northern. Yeah, and and so it's. It's basically the uh, the wife of the Winchester family that kind they kind of went a little crazy and they started building this weird mystery house. Oh, this sounds we're like, fantastic! Yeah, where like stairways go to nothing and weird oh, hidden uh, rooms. Oh, I gotta look this up. Yeah, totally. Oh, I'm all over Winchester this. House. The we Winchester got, House. If Netflix does a documentary on it, I'm down. Right? That's all it takes. They're a winery, really. By it, yeah, too, Night you know? Stalker. You gotta watch the Night Stalker. I mean, I'm down. Yeah, California is an awesome state, but oh, we got everything. There, there's some, yeah, there's we some got weird everything. Stuff that goes yeah, on we got we got everything you need. Yeah, and more. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love it. So, I you know I can't thank you enough first oh, of all totally. for coming on. Like the advice, I'm taking some of that advice with me today. <laughs> I know those you'll be in your pool. Are. That's it. <laughs> Not just dying. Yes. Yeah, I'm swimming for recreation and for fun. But <laughs> she said I could do it if I just <laughs> any focus. <laughs> I'm just saying this. <laughs> you have an open invite anytime. All right. You come back into Youngstown. All right. I come we, back we'll, about three times a year, so, so we'll do yeah, it again. Yeah, let's let's plan another one Totally soon. cool. Um, and, you know, I, I know I speak for uh, the Boardman Swim Coaches. They they are yeah. so appreciative of them. And I know other swimmers in the area are watching. Yeah. And, I mean, it's you're great. just awesome. We'll so do, I, yeah, we'll try to come back on a Tuesday, Thursday. We'll do some, you know, we'll take some calls or whatever you yeah, want to do. Yeah. That'd be great. All that right. That sounds good. So, Sweet. So, Melanie, thank you again so much for coming in. Um, I'm putting this gold Go ahead, on before Go we ahead. before we leave. I'm, I'm just gonna throw it just on. Throw right it on. I'm just throw it on. Just throw it on. Should be a nighting ceremony. And this thing is, be this thing is pretty heavy too. Every, it's pretty you know, substantial too. There you go. Too. Look, Look at that. that. Look at that. So awesome. So Melanie, thanks again. You're so welcome. Um, appreciate you all. You guys watching, listening, um, and uh, we'll talk to you yeah. very soon. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to so the cool. show on Youngstown Studio. If you like our programming, we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Facebook page, or subscribe to your favorite podcast platform like iTunes or Spotify. This is original Youngstown content, and we would appreciate you sharing the videos and the word about us.